Hey guys, and welcome to the video. And this another episode of Hacking Modding News and Info. This is a weekly segment that I do where I go over and cover and highlight some of the information regarding the hacking, modding, homebrew, jailbreak, and emulation scenes that I think viewers of this channel would either find helpful, informative, useful, or just entertaining. There is a strong focus here on consoles and handhelds, but we do cover stuff regarding PCs and phones and other platforms as well from time to time. And pretty much everything I cover is strictly oriented towards the end user. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what's gone down over the past week or so. All right, and we begin this week with the PS3. There's just one thing here we are going to be covering and I'm gonna kind of gloss over it because I really think that I'm going to do a tutorial on this and this is Webman Classics Maker version 2.0 GUI release. I'm actually chatting here in the forums with the developer trying to get some things sorted out. Initially, I thought this worked a certain way that would have made it a little bit more tedious, but it turns out to be something different. I think what it does is that that it adds kind of like an XMB shortcut to the game you already have installed. Now it needs to be an ISO, like a PS1, ISO, PS2, PS3, PSP and whatnot. You need to have Webman Mod installed, but basically this even makes a little bit better compatibility with like PS2 and then the game launches right from the XMB. So when you hover over it, it looks like the game was installed via, you know, a package file and you can even make your own icon and background or whatever. So anyway, I'm going to get things sorted out. And then once I have more information for you, I'll either do the tutorial at some point this week or at the very least next week's episode will have a lot more details regarding this. Now we move on to the PS4. Four, and here we have an update to Lethal's 6.72 exploit host menu. This is now on version eight. I already did a video on this. It's right here. I did it, I think a couple of days ago. I go into a little bit more detail with it there. So I'll put a link in the description to it. But basically the two things that are notable here, one is that he made this a bit more streamlined. You don't have all those other uh, jailbreak exploits up here. You now now just have only the exploit hen, which for end users, that really is all that you need. Secondly, this is now hen version 2.1.3b. Apparently people were having issues with some trophies and things like that. And this version of hen fixes some of those issues with the trophies. Stability is still the same as in previous versions, but just keep in mind, guys, this is something that is ongoing. So hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll get better updates in terms of stability with these hens for 6.72. Up next, if you are a fan of Dragon Ball Fighter Z and you have a modded PS4 and you have this version of the game installed in your system, you might be interested in installing this Dragon Ball Fighter Z mod. This mod adds, as you can see here, a few things to the game. You need to install the base game, need to have update 1.19 installed, install all DLC, and then install this mod pack. This mod pack is a regular package file that installs like any other fake package file on your PS4, and it's almost 2.4 gigs in size. If this is something that you're interested in using, just grab the download from right here and have at it. And the last thing we are covering with the PS4 is an update to PS4 Package Sender. This is now version 1.05. Package Sender allows you to install package files straight from your PC to your PS4. Both need to be on the same network in order for you to do this. As long as you have a PS4 that is running 4.50 up to 6.72 firmware, you'll be good to go. And of course, it needs to be modded as well because you need to have package installer running on your PS4. The download to get this tool is here in the description of this kind of like mini tutorial. And you can also get more information from the GitHub link that's provided. 
And now we head on over to the Switch, starting with an update to NSZ. Now, NSZ, for those that don't know, is a format that offers a very high level of compression for your backed up Switch games, similar to like XCI or NSP. But I remember when this first came out, it was touting that it can save even up to 80% of space compared to an NSP file, which is pretty important impressive. You may not get those results, but it does offer a very high level of compression more than any of the other formats out there. Make sure you read up on the instructions if you've never used this before. They're here for Linux and for PC. Those of you who are going to use this with PC, there's a file down here that has all the binaries that you need. It's the Win64 portable zip file, and really everything you need is right there. You don't need much of anything else, including the exe file. And while you're here, you can check out this huge list of added improvements, enhancements, fixes, and all this other stuff. It's really impressive. This latest version is 4.0. And next for the Switch, we have FISO or Fizzo, I don't know, however you pronounce it. It's a tool that allows you to adjust the color screen of your Nintendo Switch. You obviously need to have a modded system, but with this, you could do several things such as modify the color temperature of your display. You can apply color corrections to gamma, luminance, and color range. You can control the screen backlight brightness and things of that nature. It does have a handy overlay menu as well. You have your installation instructions here on GitHub. When you go over to the releases and you see here what what this latest update has to offer, grab the zip file and the only thing you need to do is copy and paste the contents straight onto the root of your SD card and you'll be all set. And lastly, for the Switch, we are going to cover another update to NX Shell. Last week, there was one as well. I'm not going to spend too much time with this because I've talked about it many times in the past. It's a file explorer, file manager type deal uh, for your Switch. And I've been using this particular one since day one. It is my go-to file explorer on the Switch. And it seems that every single update brings something that is useful, wanted, or just overall better to the homebrew. And this latest one is no exception. We now are able to extract zip files using NX Shell, which is great. You can check out the other things they've done with this update, a few fixes here and there, and then you can grab the NRO file from right here, and it installs like any other NRO homebrew. And now we head on over to the 3DS scene. A couple of updates we're going to talk about real quick. First, Wumibo, which gets updated to 1.0. I think I talked about this in last week's episode with that recent update, but this one fixes a lot of critical issues. So if you used the older version, in the past, make absolutely sure that you update to this one. Now, this allows you to do Amiibo emulation on your 3DS, 2DS systems, which I know is a huge welcome for some people. Your instructions are here on the GitHub and in the releases page, you can grab that latest zip. Again, if you use the older versions of this, make absolutely sure because of all the bugs that have been fixed that you snag this latest update. And next for the 3DS, we have an update to Twilight Menu. I've gone over this many times before. It's a emulator type deal that allows you to play backed up ROMs from popular Nintendo and Sega systems like SNES, NES, the various Game Boys, Sega Master System, the Sega Genesis, and so on. And I think even recently they added the ability for you to even be able to play backed up TurboGrafx-16 ROMs. Now there's been two updates here recently. There was one that came out yesterday, 16.2.0, which added a few nice things here and there and had your usual bug fix but then just a few minutes ago when I was recording this, they actually came out with another release, 16.2.1, which fixed some key issues as well. You can go to the assets. Most people will use this either on their DSi and you have your DSi 7 zip there. For those of you using this on your 3DS, you have your 3DS file up here on top. There's also a few other files here for those who want to use this via a different method. 
And next, let's head on over to the world of emulation, starting with this. This is a Switch emulator for Android. That's right, you heard me right, an Android device that can emulate the Nintendo Switch. Before you get too excited, this comes with a couple of really big caveats. Number one is that you need to have a high-end Android device in order for this to work. It has to have a Snapdragon 855 processor or higher. You also must have this controller. Now, this is a controller type deal that connects pretty much to any phone that has a USB type C connection. This was rated here by ETA Prime and he actually likes the build quality and says it's very good but this emulator has drm that's locked to this controller it's also software locked which means you have to sign up to use this emulator and you must be constantly on the internet if you are not the emulator is not going to work now i'm sure in the future someone will probably find a way around this he also states that even on a high-end 1400 android device he was still having issues he was surprised with overall how well it kind of worked but he was having various issues with games not working or crashing and things of that nature anyway i'll put a link in the description here so you can watch his video he covers a lot of it in more detail and next we have an update to rpcs3 this is a ps3 emulator for your pc and most notable in this update online play via PSN emulation. Now what this means is that they've managed to set up a private server and this private server emulates PSN. So if you're using this emulator, or I should say anyone using this emulator, if you want to log into that private server, you can, and then everyone can, you know, just get online and play. You can't obviously log in to the real PSN network, but I guess this is the next best thing. Down in the description of this video, there's a little bit more explanation. There's also various links, as well as a link for you to get the latest version of this emulator. And we will wrap things up this week with a miscellaneous mention here at Logic Sunrise. Again, the site is in French, so you may have to translate it over to your language to be able to understand it. But it was posted here an update to Xlink Kai. This is 7.4.38. If you haven't heard of this before, what this is, is that it's intended to replace the native online game mode of certain games in order to offer support for LAN multiplayer modes. So what they've done here is that they set up kind of a global network where players can, you know, connect to this network and then just game online. And it works with various consoles from PS2, PS3s, and PS4s to pretty much every generation of Xbox from the original one all the way up to Xbox One, as well as the Vita, the GameCube, the Switch, and so on. Here there's some brief overview. There's also a link to a tutorial for those of you that have a Switch and then a download link so you can download X-Link Kai. If you're interested in how to use this for your particular system, just do a search for X-Link Kai and then type in the name of your console afterwards and I'm sure you'll see some tutorials pop up. And that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel, as always, you know, the best way to do any of those things is just to hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.